It's 10 a.m. on WKYT Midmorning, a Republican upset in Iowa, and the Democratic race is pretty much a draw. Results from the Iowa caucuses are in. Governor Matt Bevin is expected to sign a bill into law that changes the state's informed consent law for abortions. And the Kentucky Wildcats are on the road again tonight. They're back in conference play this time to take on Tennessee. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning. Great to have you along on WKYT. It's Groundhog Day. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. The, the Groundhog surprisingly said a short winter. <laughs> right. We'll see, right? Um, yeah, the approval rate on him is yeah, very low, I think though. It's like uh, he's wrong most of the time. We're keeping a <laughs> close eye on the weather time. this morning. We can see record highs today, and it is warm out there right now, and then strong storms possibly tonight. Meteorologist Micah Harris is tracking the threat on this WKYT first alert severe weather day. Yeah, Micah? We, we have some lower clouds at this moment, so we're not heating up very rapidly just yet. Still feels pretty good outside. But wait until those clouds start to break apart, and you'll really see those temperatures skyrocket. Outside at the moment, nothing really going on. Temperatures in the mid-50s down south. Remember, the low clouds around here in the bluegrass and northbound, that warm front will extend northbound as we go through the day. And you'll see those temperatures by the afternoon, upper 60s to around 70 degrees. Now, we're going to be talking about these storms that's going to be moving through. That's obviously our focus, and I've updated the timing on these, and I'll show you that coming up in just about 10 minutes. Okay, see you then. Thank you. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump is headed for friendlier territory today. Trump finished second to Ted Cruz in the Iowa caucuses and was nearly caught by Marco Rubio, who came in a strong third. New Hampshire is the battleground next week, and with its first in the nation primary, Trump has leads in the polls there. Marley Hall reports from Des Moines, where Democrats Democrats came out of Iowa pretty much neck and neck. Democratic officials in Iowa haven't officially announced a winner, but Hillary Clinton has declared victory. Both candidates addressed their supporters late last night as the numbers were still being counted. I will keep standing up for you. I will keep fighting for you. We are going to create an economy that works for working families, not just the billionaire class. With the race a virtual tie, both candidates will likely leave Iowa with roughly the same number of delegates. But pundits say the result doesn't bode well for Bernie Sanders. This was a must-win night for Bernie, and a tie is probably not going to cut it. Um, you know, he didn't turn out the quote-unquote Obama coalition as he would have hoped for. Republican turnout here in Iowa shattered records as voters handed victory to Ted Cruz over Donald Trump. Fresh off his win, the Texas senator spoke with Major Garrett for CBS This Morning. There are only two ways to run, scared and unopposed. I am certainly not unopposed, so we're continuing to run scared. We finished second, and I want to tell you something. I'm just honored. All eyes are now on Marco Rubio, who pulled away with a third-place finish last night, only trailing Trump by 1%. The big target is on Marco Rubio's back. It's not only going to be Cruz and Trump going after Rubio, but it's going to be these guys, Bush and, uh, and, and uh, Christie and Kasich. The focus of the 2016 presidential campaign now shifts to New Hampshire, which holds the first in the nation primary next week. Marley Hall, CBS News, Des Moines, Iowa. And the Iowa caucuses also means the end for two candidates in the race. Mike Huckabee and Martin O'Malley both suspended their presidential bids last night. One candidate not dropping out of the race is Kentucky U.S. Senator Rand Paul. The Republican finished fifth in Iowa. That's good enough to earn him a single delegate. Speaking to his staff and supporters last night, Senator Paul said Iowa is just the beginning. We will continue to fight. Tonight is the beginning. Liberty will live on. We fight on. Thank you for all of your support. Senator Paul did better than former Florida Governor Jeb Bush, who a year ago seemed like a favorite for the Republican nomination. A federal grand jury has subpoenaed records for Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes' last two campaigns. Grimes' attorney says she is not the target of the investigation. The grand jury subpoena relates to finances of her 2014 U.S. Senate campaign and her 2015 Secretary of State campaign. The grand jury also subpoenaed records of her father, Jerry Lundergan, and two of his companies. A bill that would change Kentucky's informed consent law is headed to the governor's desk. In a 33 
3 to 5 vote, the state Senate gave final approval to the House passed bill yesterday. It would allow for women seeking abortions to consent to the procedure through real time video conferencing. Currently, Kentucky law requires conferencing face to face. The ACLU of Kentucky said in a statement that Governor Bevin should, quote, be wise to veto the bill. However, a spokesperson for the governor told our partners at the Herald Leader that he will sign it. A newly released report says Kentucky's coal production has fallen to its lowest level in more than 60 years. The Kentucky Energy and Environment Cabinet says production fell to 61 million tons last year, a 21 percent drop compared to 2014. Coal production has not been this low since 1954. Experts blame oversupply, competition from natural gas, and tougher environmental regulations for the decline. Kentucky Coal Association President Bill Bissett said the state numbers were worse than expected. A man was rushed to the hospital in critical condition after being hit by a car on New Circle Road. It happened last night near Russell Cave Road. Lexington police say the man did not have the right of way when he was hit while crossing New Circle. He has severe leg and head injuries. The driver was not charged. New on WKYT at mid-morning, state police are investigating after two people were stabbed inside their Harlan County home. It happened early this morning in the Cumberland area, east of Harlan. State police say the couple got a knock at the door and two men forced their way inside. A man in the house was stabbed five times. A woman was choked and punched. Police are still looking for the two men who police say were there to steal medication. Investigators are turning to the public now to try to figure out the cause of Saturday's massive fire at Lexington's Bluegrass Stockyards. Three days after that fire started, crews are still on the scene this morning. Firefighters say they don't suspect arson at this point. Still, they're asking anyone who has pictures or videos of the fire before the first crews arrived to send them in. We have information on how to reach the fire department's arson division on WKYT.com. A man is in jail accused of giving a Madison County woman a lethal dose of heroin. Richmond police arrested Christopher Creamer. According to the Richmond Register, the victim was found unresponsive in a home on Claiborne Drive. Two children, ages one and two, were found alone upstairs. Police say the victim received an emergency protective order against Creamer just the day before. Well, spring is coming early, so saith the rodent, or at least that's what his handlers are telling us this morning. Pennsylvania's most famous groundhog, Punxsutawney Phil, did not see his shadow this morning, meaning he is predicting an early spring. But, of course, members of the top hat-wearing inner circle decided the prediction ahead of time, as they always do. They announced the results at sunrise at Gobbler's Knob, just outside the town for which Phil is named. Phil, by the way, has only a 39% accuracy rate. So we, we'll see. I always feel, feel a little sorry for Phil. That has to be frightening for him <laughs> right. when he's all of a sudden in front of everybody and the cameras and, and all that. And so much pressure. pressure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, new on WKYT mid morning, a downtown Lexington street that's been closed for months has reopened. The road reopened this morning. Crews were paving North Upper Street between Short and Main yesterday. That block has been closed as part of construction on the new 21C Museum Hotel, which is expected to open up next month. Well, coming up, a tough overtime loss in Kansas. Of course, the uh, Kentucky Wildcats are then going to be back on the road tonight. A big game. And they return to SEC action to take on the Tennessee Volunteers. Tennessee is just 10 and 11 in Rick Barnes' first season and is coming off back to back losses to Alabama and TCU. UK coach John Calipari is looking for someone to take the burden off his three guards. Tyler Eulis played every minute of UK's overtime loss at Kansas. It's the Cats versus the Balls tonight at Thompson Bowling Arena. It'll tip off at 7 o'clock on ESPN. Always a good rivalry game when it's Kentucky and Tennessee. Well, and it doesn't matter what the record is. It's always a tough <laughs> sure, game there. Sure. Well, coming up on mid-morning, a World War II veteran fights off a burglar with one well-placed shot. Why the veteran says he missed his target. That's coming up in about six minutes or so. Looking at the low-lying clouds over us at the moment. If you look southbound, though, we're getting breaks in the clouds. That sunshine will appear. You'll see those temperatures really rise before those storms get here. We're going to talk all about that coming up next.
No rain out there at this moment, but there are, there's some thick clouds. I mean, real low lying clouds. You can see them right through here, and that's associated with what's rolling through at this moment. That warm front is trying to push on through. We're getting breaks over toward the east. We're getting breaks down toward the south. Just saw some of you on Twitter uh, send me some tweets saying, hey, finally the sunshine's coming out in the south. Wait for that to take over the region, and you'll see those temperatures really crank up. We're having a slow go at it this morning, but once that warm front moves north of us, the winds crank up. You get some sunshine, and boy, temperatures will just surge. So I was expecting temperatures in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees. Got a long ways to go, but it's going to be pretty easy once that front gets north of us. The severe weather threats later on tonight. Remember, only a small chance of rain later on this afternoon with temperatures close to record breaking. Record is 67. We'll see if we'll do that. But going off into the night, high winds, damaging winds will be our main player with this system. This is not, and I repeat, this is not an outbreak type of setup. However, this is going to be a line rolling through. Within this line, you could have damaging winds and also the possibility of a spin-up tornado. It's very low, very small chance. Just can't rule that out. And you know what else? Flooding, especially for east and southeastern Kentucky. That's your best bet because once the front rolls over to you guys after midnight, then you're talking about it just kind of settling around not really moving that much. Let's break down the timing for you. Okay, so here's what we're going to be looking at for I-65, anywhere from 7 to 10 p.m. Now, what I've done from this morning is actually pushed it back another hour. We were 6 to 9, now we're 7 to 10, around 65 corridor, so it's not really far off. Basically, what you saw this morning is basically what you're going to be dealing with uh, right now. But 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. across 75, and also that includes Lexington, Richmond, Danville. Go down 127 and 27. Expect those storms to roll through at that time. Somerset, that does include you. Somerset, London, I would lean more toward 1 a.m. as opposed to 10 p.m. So it's coming from the west. So you can expect it 10, 11, midnight, 1, 2. You get my drift. Over toward the far eastern zones, you're talking about after midnight, wee morning of the hour, uh, hours of the morning. And you'll see a lot of heavy rain in this region. Now, I'd say it's an isolated severe threat in the far eastern areas, um, but really no widespread severe weather for eastern Kentucky. It's more of the heavy rain, the possible flooding, and also isolated uh, damaging wind threat. That takes us into tomorrow morning. I'd say the storms and also the rain moves out around 8 to 9 a.m. In the morning over in eastern Kentucky. Once that moves on out, 50 by the afternoon. And then we stay pretty dry all the way throughout the week, and the weekend doesn't look all that bad in the 40s and then we drop it right back down there on Monday with that chance of snow in the forecast. But for today, upper 60s to around 70 degrees. Once we finally get that sunshine going, that front moving north of us, that warm front, you'll really see those temperatures climb very rapidly. Yeah, very quickly. Right. Really a spring pattern with the, the warmth and the storms tonight, yeah, no right? Kidding. Yeah, you're right about that. Then winter comes mm -hmm. back. <laughs> yeah. well, California police say a man in his 20s tried to break into a home with an axe. He probably was not that counting on finding a that World War in. II veteran there to defend his home. 92-year-old Joe Milspa says when he saw the suspect, he fired a single shot and the man took off running, leaving his axe behind. Milspa says he didn't want to kill the man, just scare him off. Shoot, I could have shot him straight in the head right between the eyes, but I didn't want to do that. Milspa says he has had that gun for decades, and by the way, he still goes to the gun range, but just wanted to give him a good scare. Yeah, don't mess with Millspa, <laughs> right. because he said it could have been much worse. Yep. So, well, the nominations are out for this year's Country Music Awards, and the Coen brothers have fun with their latest film. Suzanne Marquez has more now in your Eye on Entertainment. The star-studded cast of the Coen Brothers' latest comedy turned out in Los Angeles for the film's world premiere. <laughs> Hail Caesar, set in 1950s Hollywood, features George Clooney, Josh Brolin, and Channing Tatum, to name a few. It was fun to go on to a lot, like an old-fashioned movie lot, and see all these giant statues come wheeling by. Rounding out the ensemble are Ray Fiennes, Jonah Hill, and Channing Tatum. Hail Caesar opens Friday. Dirks Bentley stopped by CBS this morning to announce the nominations for the Academy of Country Music Awards, including Entertainer of the Year. Jason Aldean. Yay. Garth Brooks. Yay. Luke Bryan. Yeah. Eric Church and Miranda Lambert. I'm a Bentley, who is up for Best Male Vocalist, will co-host the event with Luke Bryan. The show airs April 3rd on CBS. 
Sting came out to support the new HBO documentary about James Foley, one of the American journalists beheaded by ISIS. Sting contributed an original song to the movie. Everybody loved him, and everybody who sees the film will fall in love with this man. And it's such an antidote to all the noise and nonsense in the world, you know, that, that killed him. The James Foley story premieres Saturday on HBO. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. And we hope you'll keep it here on Mid Morning. You can show your support for your Super Bowl pick with cookies. After the break, we'll tell you how Donuts Day's Bakery is marking the upcoming Super Bowl. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $63 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $112 million. Welcome back in, and it's good to have you with us here on Mid Morning. If you're hosting a Super Bowl party or attending one, and you're looking for something fun to serve up or take with you, maybe, here's an idea, and it's Super Bowl cookies. We're joined by Charlene Olap, manager of Donut Days Bakery, who's brought in some delicious cookies. They're not only delicious, though, these are really pretty. They are. They are. Really nice looking. You fix them up for each team, right? Exactly. Yeah. We can specialize them for any team that you want. These are just the two that are in the Super Bowl, but if your team didn't make it, we can still make cookies for you, too. You can okay, still you do that. Okay, so how's this going going so far? Is one team leading the other in orders? Does that make a make Believe a difference? Believe it or not, it's kind of head to head right now. Oh, really? really? Yep. Okay. All right. And uh, so you uh, also have other events going on. Super Bowl, we, the big deal, and everybody can uh, order those ahead of time. But Valentine's Day is on exactly. the way. Exactly. This Mardi is like Gras. one of our biggest weeks. Yeah. We've got the Super Bowl cookies going out. Then Tuesday's Mardi Gras, we do our king cakes. We do them in the regular size. We also do them full sheet size for hotels and restaurants. And then right next weekend is going to be Valentine's Day. We've got cookies, cupcakes, pedophores, custom cakes, you name it, we'll bake it. Man, you really do have it going. You also have a new location. Tell us about exactly. that. Exactly. Um, we just opened in Richmond. Um, it's at 3.30 on the bypass. Uh, it's right on the same exit as you get to Eastern. And Monday through Saturday, uh, 6 a.m. until noon. Very good. And you told us also that you like to partner with local nonprofits, do some good in the community as well. Right? Definitely, yeah. Tell yeah. Us about it. Um, every day, uh, the Salvation Army picks up between three and five tubs from our Southland location. Um, our smaller location over in Chevy Chase, um, we donate to, uh, we have a church, mobile church that comes in every Saturday and gets them for their Sunday. They actually cater to the homeless um, so they don't have a permanent location but also in Richmond we donate we've already donated to the hospice we've already donated to a couple different churches and nonprofits oh that's a really nice way to kind of share what you've been able to exactly. do exactly when people come in and say they've got a big event going do you take that as a challenge when they say I want a cookie to do this oh yeah we, we can do we actually do uh, donut towers we do cookie cakes we do full size like I said the sheet cakes mm -hmm. uh, we do everything from the four inch smash cake all the way up to custom wedding Cakes. And, and your king cake does have a baby? It does, but we don't <laughs> put it in there. It is a choking hazard, so we always oh. let people know it's in the corner of the box. They need to lift up the cake and put it in. Oh, but we do cool. still include that's, it. Right. That's a nice way to do it. Yes. Well, it's a fun business to be in. Definitely. <laughs> Very festive. Bakery with those three locations at uh, Southland Drive in Chevy Chase and in Richmond now. Exactly. All right, thanks for yeah. coming. Thank you. Thanks. Well, keep it right here this mid morning. We'll check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next, see what's cooking up there. We're all about food today. Here's a new twist on an old recipe that's so easy to make. It will be your favorite side dish any night of the week. Today in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, it's loaded baked potato casserole. People often ask where we get our ideas for our recipes. Most of the time, our inspiration comes from you asking us for new twists on your old favorites. Like what we're making today. It takes everything we love about a loaded baked potato and turns it into a hearty throw together casserole. We started by baking some frozen steak fries until they're crispy. With the frozen ones, a lot of the work is already done for us. While they were cooking, we chopped up some red bell pepper, some scallions, and a few slices of cooked bacon. Now we take half of these fixins and sprinkle them over our potatoes and top them off with, get this, a can of cheddar cheese soup. Yep, right from the can, not diluted. We finish it off by covering the whole thing with the rest of our veggie mixture, and then we'll pop it in the oven. Once it's heated through, serve it with dollops of sour cream and a few chopped scallions, and you've got all the flavors of a restaurant-style baked potato with the ease of a casserole. I hope you'll go to MrFood.com and get the recipe for our loaded baked potato casserole so you can add this to your game day lineup.
I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where every day we're looking for a new way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Good? Ooh, she's right. aggressive going after yeah, that food. Right. Must be good. Pretty good. Well, we're going to look at the weather the rest of the day. We're getting into the afternoon, holding on to uh, pretty dry conditions throughout your afternoon. I would say there's about a 20 to 30 percent chance afternoon hours, but it's really off into the night. We start to see those storms move on in. We're seeing temperatures well above average, maybe even record breaking temperatures, 65 to about 70 degrees is what we're calling for. If we do reach 67 or above here in Lexington, we actually break a record and those winds will be very gusty too. But it's to 90 and 2 tomorrow morning, guys. We're talking about these storms. There is a severe weather threat and we'll get into that. We'll have new data coming in in the next hour. So we'll have that coming up at WKYT News at noon. All right. All right. I hope you'll join us then. Hey, we want to thank you for joining us for mid morning here on WKYT. The Bold and the Beautiful is next on CBS. We hope to see you back here at noon, but your news is always on at WKYT.com.